Hello, today I will be talking about Waymo, Google's ambitious self-driving vehicle project which began in 2009. A self-driving car, also known as an autonomous car or a driverless car, is a vehicle that is capable of sensing its environment and moving with little or no human input by combining a variety of sensors to detect the surroundings such as radar, computer vision, lidar, GPS, etc. Experiments have been conducted since 1920 and the first experimental vehicle was tested in 1950. The first self-sufficient and fully autonomous car appeared in 1980. It was during the first DARPA Grand Challenge in 2004, the term self-driving cars started to be widely used among many people. In the 2005 race, a team led by Sebastian Thurn of Stanford University won the race, who then became the lead in Google's self-driving car program. Google's development of self-driving technology began in 2009 at the company's secretive X lab run by co-founder Sergey Brin. The project was originally led by Sebastian Throne. The team developing the system consisted of 15 engineers working for Google. First, they modified a Toyota Prius and then worked with customized Lexus SUVs which took the car's existing sensors such as the cruise control cameras and added a spinning laser scanner on the top. The car in the image, nicknamed Firefly, was the first real physical incarnation of Google's vision of what a self-driving car of the near future could be which can transport two people from one place to another without any user interaction. Google designed the car from scratch, manufacturing all the needed hardware and software in home. Since 2010, various lawmakers across different states of the US had raised concerns about the need for this emerging technology and how to regulate it. Also, there are concerns regarding the feasibility of such vehicles coming into use. There might be affordability issues and the companies working in these technologies should be able to satisfy their customers at a reasonable price. By 2015, Google was able to deliver the first fully driverless ride on public roads to a legally blind person. It was the first driverless ride that was on a public road and was not accompanied by a test driver or police escort. The car had no steering wheel or floor pedals. The self-driving car project of Google later became a standalone subsidiary of Apple Incorporated in December 2016. The name Waymo is derived from its mission, a new way forward in mobility. Waymo moved to, to further test its cars on public roads after becoming its own subsidiary. The new renamed unit of Google began testing its autonomous minivans driverless on public roads in Chandler, Arizona in 2017. It was later announced in the beginning of 2018 that it would commence the first ride-sharing services in Phoenix, Arizona. As of now, there are not much legally operating fully automated vehicles in the United States of America. There are, however, a few partially automated cars by manufacturers like Tesla. 
The self-driving vehicle technology is still in its infancy, but it is getting common and could increasingly transform the transportation industry soon. Road accidents today are primarily due to human errors, which include driving under influence, aggressive driving, not attentive to road and traffic signs, and not following the road rules all lead to these. Self-driving cars could practically eliminate such accidents to a greater extent. This technology also possibly decreases traffic congestion. Self-driving cars can be designed and programmed to automatically space out between vehicles, eliminating the problem. Moreover, self-driving cars can ease the burden of transportation of elderly, disabled and children seamlessly. Google is not alone in this field. Other car manufacturers also have started to invest in autonomous vehicle research. It includes Uber, Mercedes, BMW, Active, Tesla, etc. These automakers may use different design specifications, but they maintain an internal map of the surroundings which are developed using the data collected from an array of different sensors mount on the vehicle. Google's automated vehicles prototypes have used lasers, radar, high-powered cameras at various stages of development. Waymo has been persistently preparing for a commercial service. At the end of last year, Waymo team announced that their self-driven cars are test driving on public roads without drivers. Google had highlighted the business uses for its autonomous technology, which includes ride-sharing, trucking, public transportation, and personal cars. They also have ideas for licensing this technology to vehicle manufacturers. It is expected that the ride hailing by self-driven cars would pose a major competition to the local public transportation. Waymo and Phoenix City's Mass Transit Authority had made a partnership for two years promoting the ride sharing feature and they were able to provide rides at a rate of $1.7 per mile which is much lesser than the average $2.5 per mile charged by local taxis. It is expected to cost less than 35 cents per mile by the year 2020. When Google launched its self-driving car program in 2009, people who won the first DARPA challenge were hired. Within 18 months, they were able to build a prototype and test it on the toughest California roads with minimal human involvement. It was only a few years later, Elon Musk of Tesla announced the development of self-driving cars, followed by ride-hailing service providers like Uber and Lyft. After a few years, the technology reached to its epitome that no automaker could possibly ignore it. Companies like Ford, General Motors, Nissan, Mercedes all started investing billions of dollars into their R&D. In May 2012, a Toyota Prius modified with Google's experimental driverless technology was licensed by the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles and this became the first license issue in the US for a self-driven car. In August 2012, Google announced that their vehicles had completed over 300,000 automated driving miles accident-free, typically involving about a dozen cars on the road at any given time. Since then, Google has been introducing various prototypes of its driverless car technology. By 2017, Waymo developed and unveiled new sensors and other equipment 
to be used in their fleet of vehicles, which include cameras with improved visibility. They manufacture all the needed hardware in-house. This in turn reduces Waymo's dependence on other suppliers for raw materials. As of 2017, they were able to reduce the cost down by 90% by designing their own LIDAR. In 2017, Waymo and Chrysler together introduced fully self-driving Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans, which can be seen in the image, hence building the first vehicle on mass production platform with fully integrated hardware built in home and employed full autonomy. In 2018, Google announced to launch a fleet of autonomous trucks to move freight which would use the same sensors and software as that of Waymo cars. As of today, Waymo has tested its system in about 6 states and 25 cities across the United States over a span of about a decade. Google's self-driven cars had run over 10 million miles. The system drives at the speed limit it has stored on its maps and maintains its distance from other vehicles using its system of sensors. It has since expanded its areas of testing. The advanced development stage distinguishes the issues related with the usage of the unproven innovation. What's more decides whether the practical specifications required for execution and operational prerequisites are substantial or not. Advanced development stage is the reasonable execution of the concept development phase. Greater part of the vulnerabilities is settled through investigation and advancement. Some of the uncertainties in the Google's self-driving car may include the weather condition, say if it rains or snows, external turbulence engine, heat, traf traffic, pedestrians, singularities, etc. Engineering Design Waymo incubated from a Google venture at a firmly monitored testing office found 120 miles southeast of San Francisco. That is the place its robots finish their driver's training. Although Google has been pioneering in the self-driving vehicle industry, they have restrained from manufacturing their own vehicles. Initially, they had manufactured vehicles which were used for testing. For commercialization, Google started buying cars from Fiat Chrysler FCA, the Chrysler Pacifica, which are currently being used for testing and which would be available for commercial use. Selling vehicles with Waymo's self-driving innovation at Fiat Chrysler dealerships would be a dramatic heightening in Waymo's arrangement to convey driverless vehicles to the majority. Core components of Google's Waymo in they include radar sensors, optics, lidar, GPS and processors. Radars assist the vehicle recognize street elements for example, makeshift routes, activity delays, vehicle collisions, and other deterrents by sending a flag to the onboard processor to apply the brakes or potentially move off the beaten path. Optics refer to cameras which are utilized to distinguish traffic signals and street markings. 
Some self-driving vehicles can work utilizing only a solitary camera installed in the windshield. The LiDAR unit, which resembles a turning alarm light, gives driverless vehicles profoundly exact long-range identification with scopes of up to 100 meters. The turning LiDAR units are regularly mounted to the highest point of the vehicle, giving an unhindered 360 degree view. GPS is a vital on the grounds that it characterizes the mission of the self-driving vehicle by setting a begin and end purpose of the drive. Self-driving vehicles are smaller than expected computers on board to understand the majority of the vehicle's instruments with a few autos running in excess of 20 distinct processes. Self-driving software Perception is the piece of our product that recognizes and classifies objects on the road and evaluate their speed, heading and acceleration in time. It enables the vehicle to recognize people on foot, cyclists, motorcyclists, vehicles, etc. It moreover separates the color of objects like traffic signals. With behavior prediction, Waymo can demonstrate, anticipate and comprehend the goal of each object on the road. For instance, the software understands however people on foot, cyclists and motorcyclists may seem to be comparable. Their conducts can differ significantly. The planner considers all the data it has accumulated from perception and behavior, forecast and plots out a way for the vehicles. Utilizing the on-street experience, the driving is refined so the movement on roads is smoother and more comfortable for the passengers for those on the road. Integration and Evaluation The integration and evaluation phase are needed to check whether the engineering design is reliable. Waymo has three primary subsystems that are rigorously tested. The base vehicle, the in-house hardware and self-driving software. Hardware testing Through a specialized coordinated effort between FCA and Google's Waymo, Waymo's self-driving framework was designed and integrated including self-driving sensors and hardware with the altered Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans bought from FCA. Tests are finished at private test tracks, labs and in simulations and are utilized to assess every security capacity of the vehicle from brakes and directing to physical vehicle. With these tests, it was guaranteed that the vehicle works securely in manual mode, self-driving mode with a tester in the driver's seat and completely self-driving mode without anyone on the driver's seat. Software Testing Simulation Testing In simulation, any progressions or updates to the product are thoroughly tested before they are deployed. The most difficult circumstances the vehicles have experienced on open streets are encountered and they are turned into virtual situations for the self-driving software to rehearse and simulation. 
closed course testing. New software is pushed to a couple of vehicles first so they generally experienced drivers can test the new programming on the private test track. Diverse arrivals of programming are utilized for various vehicles with the goal that new or explicit features inside various operational plan spaces can be tested. Real world driving. Once the software is filling in as planned, new software with the vehicles on open streets are introduced. The self-driving vehicles must show they can securely and reliably travel a predetermined course and then the new software is updated to the entire fleet. Post development stage. After testing the base vehicle, the self driving framework and the software independently, at that point, the completely incorporated self driving vehicle is tested. This incorporates closed course collision avoidance testing, unwavering quality and toughness testing, and on-street testing with prepared test pilots in the driver's seat. Testing on public roads. The frameworks are screened to guarantee they exhibit best behavioral abilities and there is a search for circumstances where there is scope for expansion on these skills and enable smoother driving. In the past eight years, Waymo has tested the vehicles in four US states and self-driven in excess of 20 urban communities from the bright Phoenix in Arizona to blustery Kirkland in Wyoming, collecting more than 3.5 million autonomous miles. As it extends to new areas, Google is ready to accumulate a more extensive variety of experiences with various street situations, streetscapes and driver propensities. Testing Crash Avoidance Capabilities Waymo has finished a huge number of accident evasion tests at the private test track. Every one of these individual tests reproduces a particular driving situation and enables to analyze the vehicle's reaction. An assortment of sources was used to realize which crashes to test against. They incorporate Google's own examination of sources, for example, NHTSA's Lethal Accident Information Base and utilization of their broad experience working on self-driving vehicles to develop NHTSA's 37 pre-crash situations. They additionally test circumstances in which other street clients make conceivably hazardous circumstances. For example, vehicles suddenly hauling out of garages, extensive vehicles cutting crosswise over target paths, motorcyclists weaving through traffic, and people on foot jaywalking. Self-driving in extreme weather conditions Waymo's self-driving framework needs to work securely even in hot conditions. Their vehicles are outfitted with an extraordinary cooling framework that gives them a chance to work under extremely hot temperatures even with a motor running at full power and systems at full limit. The self-driving vehicles were tested in three of America's most blazing spots, Las Vegas, Davis Dam and Death Valley. Davis Valley 
holds the record for the most elevated formally recorded temperature on earth of 134 degree Fahrenheit. Early Rider Program Google needed to figure out how a self-driving vehicle could fit into individuals' daily transportation needs. Regardless of whether that is an individual use vehicle as a ride share or to make public travel progressively open. That is the reason in April 2017 they propelled their initial rider program, the first public preliminary of their self driving vehicles in Phoenix metropolitan area. Ease of use. To enable passengers travel seamlessly, the car has features like a display, start ride button, pull over button, a mobile app, and a rider support team. Waymo 1. Starting December 5 of 2018, Google took the next big step in their journey to bring their autonomous vehicle Waymo 1 to the public by inviting riders from their early rider program and gave them the first access to Waymo 1. They plan to roll out the ride share feature soon to more people across the country. The riders get access to the Waymo app which they can use to call the self-driving vehicles 24-7. Passengers can ride across several cities in Metro Phoenix area which includes Chandler, Tempe, Mesa and Gilbert. Google Waymo has over 10 million miles of experience on public roads. Riders can be able to access the fare estimates before they could ride including the travel time and specifying the destination. A maximum of three adults and a child can ride. So there's a lot of space to bring friends along to share the experience. Feedback from passengers will always keep on being indispensable. Waymo One riders will give remarks in the application. They can help shape a future where life on road is less unpleasant and more secure for everybody. Every new technology comes with their own kind of challenges and hindrances. The vehicles must be able to make fast decisions in diverse driving conditions. They must also have an edge over other conventional vehicles in reducing the environmental pollution. There also is a sizable gap between the self-drive technology and the current regulations. The self-driving vehicles must be able to make decisions at times of crisis like an unfortunate accident. There is also a need to formulate regulations, insurance model and other liabilities for a new technology that had never existed before. Maps need to be generated in a machine readable format and be verified whether the vehicle is adhering to the set of rules given to it. Google's self-driving cars work based on a combination of pre-made maps and the data from an array of sensors integrated with the vehicle. Before Google tests its autonomous vehicle, the vehicles are driven and tested on roads by its employees. 
This might seem to be a time intensive process, but Google believes this is the best and affordable way to move forward with such a new technology. The self driving vehicle must be able to understand the environment around it and must understand why the objects around it, including people, behave the way they are. Then it should be able to process the data and respond to objects accordingly. Cyber security is also a major threat to such connected technologies. Last year, it was recorded that for every three hours, a self-driving car failed in California. Every January in California, car makers should test their autonomous vehicles and record how many times they had malfunctioned. An example report of such road testing carried out in 2016 is given. It can be seen that Google's self-driving car has the biggest testing program when compared to its competitors. They have had a total of 124 disengagements. This was a sharp reduction when compared to its previous year readings from 0.8 miss happenings for every 1000 miles down to just 0.2. In 2015, Google had confirmed that there had been about 12 crashes as of that time. Uber and Tesla's self-driving car collisions have proved that this technology can even lead to fatal accidents if not properly tested and designed. With the need to overcome these challenges, Google has started testing the self-driving vehicles in areas with harsh conditions and in places with complicated road systems. In 2017, Waymo began weather testing in Michigan. Also in 2017, Waymo unveiled its test facility Castle in Central Valley, California. Castle is a former air base, had served as the project's training course since 2012. In March 2018, Waymo announced its plans to build additional real-world self-driving experiments with the company's self-driving trucks delivering for sister company Google's data centers located in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you.